lesson, we learned that the basic economic problem of scarcity could be illustrated in a simple model known as the production possibilities curve. Looking at the slide here, we see that from our previous lesson, we talked about the scarce resource of time. And we discussed how in a day in which you had 16 waking hours, an individual had to allocate those scarce hours between work and play. What we're going to focus on today is the scarce resources that exist in the real world. Of course, time is a scarce resource, but so are other things as well, including land, labor or the human resources needed to produce goods and services, and capital or the technology needed to produce goods and services. We're going to look at an example of a hypothetical country that is facing scarcity in its resources and must decide between the production of two possible goods. But before we do that, let's make some observations about the PPC we drew in our previous lesson on this topic. Notice that in this case, the case of work and play in a 16 hour day, we can see that we give up four hours of work and what we gain is four hours of play. Again, if we move from point C to point E, we gain four hours of play and we give up four hours of work. One thing to observe about this straight line production possibilities curve is that the opportunity cost is always constant. In other words, one hour of work always equals one hour of play. In this case, this is a very obvious observation here. Of course, when you give up an hour of work, you are going to gain one extra hour in which you can play. But this is not always the case. The opportunity cost of increasing our consumption or production of a particular good or activity will not always remain constant. If the resources needed to produce more of the good that we want to produce more of are not exactly the same as the resources needed to produce the good that we're giving up. In other words, in a typical production possibilities curve, we may face an increasing opportunity cost as we produce more of a particular good. That's what today's lesson is going to focus on. So today we're going to talk about not an individual and how he or she chooses to allocate his time between work and play, but we're going to think about a hypothetical country with a fixed amount of land, labor, and capital resources, and we're going to look at the trade-offs that that country faces regarding how it can allocate those resources towards one of two goods. The country we're looking at today can produce either pizzas or cars. Looking at our graph here, we can see that this country can produce either 9 million pizzas, which would put it at a point like point A on its production possibilities curve, or 10,000 cars, which would put it down here at point B. Keeping in mind the fact that resources are scarce, we know that it would be impossible for this country to produce a point such as X. Because given the fact that resources are scarce, there just isn't enough land, labor, and capital to go around to produce 9 million pizzas and 10,000 cars. So the country faces a trade-off here. It's either or. It's not all of the above. So the question then is, what would this country's production possibilities curve look like? Would it be, as we saw in the case of our example of time and an individual choosing between work and play, a straight line PPC? This would be the case where the opportunity cost of an additional car is always constant in terms of pizzas that must be given up. A straight line PPC represents a constant opportunity cost between the two goods. Now, is this realistic? Will 1,000 cars always equal 1 million pizzas? The answer is no. This is highly unlikely. In the case of cars and pizzas, there is most likely an increasing opportunity cost. What would an increasing opportunity cost production possibilities curve look like? I'll draw it and then we'll do some analysis to explain why what I'm about to draw illustrate, illustrates an increasing opportunity cost between two goods. So unlike the straight line PPC that we saw in our previous video lesson, a country choosing between either cars and pizza will most likely face a PPC that is bowed outwards from the origin. Now how do I know that this is most likely the PPC that this country would face when it chooses between producing cars and pizzas? Let's put a couple points on the PPC and see what happens as the nation moves from one point to another on its PPC. First I'm going to put a point I'll call this C. 
then I'll put point D, and finally a point E. Assume that this country begins at point C on its PPC, producing 8 million pizzas and 4 million cars. Next, let's assume that this country has decided that it wishes to allocate more of its scarce resources towards cars. This country wishes to move from point C to point D. At point D, the country is producing 8,000 cars and 5 million pizzas. So how much did each new car that this country was able to produce cost in terms of pizzas? To find this, we know that four cars, we're going to simplify here and just assume that we are ignoring the thousands and the millions, cost three pizzas. To find the per car cost, all we must do is divide by four. So if one car cost 0 0.75 pizzas as the country moved from point C to point D. Now let's see what happens when the country moves from point D to point B. We erased point E. We're going to instead look at what happens as the country just moves all the way down to the horizontal axis on its PPC. The country now gains two more cars. As we see, there's two more cars, but it gives up five pizzas. So the new opportunity cost for cars is 2C equals 5P. Simplify this and we'll see that one car now costs 2.5P. What happened? As the country moved from point C to D, it only gave up 0 0.75 pizzas for each additional car that it produced. But as it moved from point D to point B, it gave up 2.5 pizzas for each additional car that it produced. So what is the explanation for the increasing opportunity cost faced by this country as it increases its production of cars from 0 to 10,000 cars? Well, there's a very simple explanation, believe it or not. It is the fact that resources are not perfectly suited for both goods. Okay, so let's go back to point A on our PPC. Assume this country were producing 9 million pizzas and no cars. As this country moved from point A to point C on its production possibilities curve, what resources, which resources in the country were taken out of pizza production and put into car production? Obviously, the workers, the land, and the technology that is best suited for making pizzas will remain in pizza production. However, the country will take those resources that are not ideally suited for pizza production and allocate them towards the production of cars. For example, cars are mineral intensive. There's lots of aluminum and steel and iron and glass in cars. Therefore, the land that was not great for growing tomatoes and wheat and cows to make cheese with, all of the things needed for make pizza, making pizza, but could be instead better used for mining, will be used for mining first. The land that is best suited for making cars will be shifted into car production. The same is true of labor. The workers that are most skilled in the economy, those engineers and scientists and designers, and the high-skilled factory workers who were being employed in pizza production, as the country made 9 million pizzas, will instead be shifted over to car production. Of course, the labor, land, and capital that is best suited for making pizzas will remain in pizza production. As the economy moves from point A to point C, the opportunity cost of those first 4,000 cars is very low. In fact, we can see that the country only gives up one million pizzas and it gets four cars. As the economy moved from point A to point C, the opportunity cost was therefore 4C equals 1P. One car only cost 0.25P. So cars were very cheap as the economy first began producing cars because those resources best suited for car production were allocated towards car production, whereas the resources best suited for pizza production remained in pizza production. Of course, as the economy moves along its production possibilities curve from point A to C, from point C to D, and from point D to B, the resources that are best suited for making cars are becoming more and more and more scarce. Ultimately, as the economy produces nothing but cars down here at point B, even 
the resources that are best suited for making pizzas will have to be allocated towards car production. So at this point, we've got people who are only skilled at flipping pizzas and farmers who are only skilled at raising wheat and tomatoes and cows for cheese working in car factories. They're not going to be very productive, but the opportunity cost in terms of how many pizzas must be given up is very high. So let's review what we've gone over here today. We've compared what we would call a constant opportunity cost PPC, which we see here, showing the trade-off between play and work in a 16-hour day. We can see that one hour of play always equals one hour of work. But when we contrast this with a more realistic PPC showing the trade-offs faced by a nation in its use of land, labor, and capital, we see a production possibilities curve that is bowed out from the origin. This indicates that as the production of one good increases from zero to its maximum amount, the opportunity cost in terms of the other good that must be given up increases. The reason for this is that resources are not perfectly substitutable between both goods being produced. When we first start producing cars, the resources best suited for producing cars will be used, whereas those best suited for producing pizzas will remain in pizza production. However, as output of cars increases, over time more and more pizza makers and farmland will have to be allocated towards producing cars. This is the law of increasing opportunity cost. It basically says that the more you produce of a particular good, the greater the cost of additional units of that good due to the fact that the resources needed for its production become increasingly scarce, therefore more costly. So now you know that a PPC can either be straight lined if the two goods being produced are identical and require the same resources, or it can be bowed out from the origin if as is more realistic in the real world, the two goods require different resources from one another. And therefore, the opportunity cost of producing one good increases as its production increases.